Welcome to the Gem Labs video tutorials, where I'm going to give you some basic step-by-step -step guidance on the ins and outs of video editing so you can get started or get a refresher on something when you need it. This first segment is going to be about batch converting video files using Adobe's Media Encoder software. To start off, let's address the obvious question, why would I want to convert my video files? Well, there are many answers to that question, but here are the most common. One, my video files are highly compressed and do not play back smoothly on my computer. Two, my computer is a bit weak and I want to make the editing process easier on it in general. Or three, I am working with screen recordings that have a variable frame rate and don't play back that smoothly. These all point to essentially the same issue, which is that a lot of the footage you would deal with screen recording or shooting with a DSLR comes in different MP4 formats, usually H.264 video which is very compressed in order to save space on your hard drive or memory card. However, to save this space, they are making your computer do more of the work when playing back the footage. These formats work fine in Premiere if you have a fast enough hard drive and powerful enough computer to run them, like the workstations at the lab, but keep in mind that even then, the more effects work, graphics work, multiple layers of video you layer, etc. you do in your work, will make it harder on the machine. So, especially when working at home and not on a proper workstation, I suggest using this recompression method to make things easier and make your process smoother. You can also do this conversion later if you didn't do it at first and you're having issues and relink the files, but it's easier if you get it all done at the start. So let's start with the process. We'll want to open Media Encoder to start, which will be in its own folder in the applications on your computer if you just installed it. When you first open Media Encoder, it may take a minute for its plugins and files to load, and then you will be greeted with its no frills UI. The only part of the program we really need for what we are currently doing is the queue window. Here's a tip. Batch converting a lot of files or very long files can take a very long time, depending on your computer and your hard drive, and it will likely use most of an average computer's processing power to do it. However, you can set up and save a queue in Media Encoder in advance. So my suggestion is that if you are doing a large or a long batch, you set up your queue in advance, save it, and then run the conversion overnight when you are not actively using your computer. To start your batch, open a Finder window on Mac or Explorer window on PC and navigate to find your files. Select all the files that you want to convert. I'm only going to do about six files for this example. Then click and drag them over onto your queue window. You'll see that two blue boxes appear, drop here to add as a separate source or drop here to stitch clips together. You want to make sure drop here to add as separate sources is highlighted in this case. Your computer will chew through your footage on ingest, which may take a minute, and then all the individual files will appear in the queue window. Select your first clip in the window, and then either use select all or shift click the last file in the window so you have all the clips selected at once. This will allow us to change all of the settings for all the clips simultaneously. In order to change these settings for your clips, click on the blue text under any of your selected files in the Format or Preset column. It will give you a warning that you are changing settings for multiple clips, which is normal, click OK. This brings us to the Export Settings window, which can look a little overwhelming, but for this task is pretty simple to use. Go to the Format dropdown and select QuickTime if it isn't already selected. Then open the Preset drop-down menu. Here you'll see the ProRes family of codecs. Let's pause for a quick explanation. ProRes codecs are designed to work in .mov files, so that's what you'll see when you've converted them. They're designed specifically for video editing, but they will also significantly increase in file size. So if you have a lot of recordings and very limited hard drive space, it can be useful to cut out any junk recordings or false takes before you batch your files. As opposed to how they are presented in the menu, they ascend in quality in a slightly different way. 422 Proxy, 422LT, 422, 422HQ, 4444, and 4444 with Alpha. In general, the visual fidelity of ProRes is very good. For screen recordings, cell phone video or video from a point-and-shoot camera, 422LT is what I would suggest. For video from a mid to high end DSLR, like an A7S III or A7 III, I would suggest 422 or 422HQ. For a dedicated video DSLR, like a GH5S or a cinema camera that shoots high bitrate footage, especially if it comes with 4444 10 bit color, you need to go to 4444 to retain that information. 
You can Google more specific instructions for your camera of choice if that's what you're working with. For this example, in most video essay work, 422LT is a good compromise between hard drive space and quality. Once you've selected your preset, Media Encoder will have filled out the rest of the settings automatically and you can click OK. The last thing you have to do is click on the blue highlighted text under the output file column. This will open a finder window or explorer window where you can tell Media Encoder where to save your files. I suggest that you save your converted files to a new folder which you mark as converted or ProRes. Here's a tip. Reading and writing to the same hard drive simultaneously will typically slow it down. So if you have multiple hard drives that are the same speed, it will be faster in most cases to write or save these converted files onto a second hard drive and then just copy them back to the main hard drive once they're done converting. Once you're done all this, all you have to do is go to the top right of the Q section and click on the play button. This will start to render or write out these files for you. Again, this can take a while, so it can sometimes be useful to set up this queue and then run it at another point when you don't have to actively use your computer. Though generally, writing ProRes is pretty quick when compared to something like an MP4 or another format. As an example, I'm also going to convert these files to H.264 at a visual quality that I would use for uploading a video essay to show you the size difference and render time difference for the resulting files. In this example, I'm using files that are just a bit larger than 1080p Full HD shot on an Osmo Pocket and combined have a runtime just shy of two minutes. Now this is being done on a fully equipped iMac with other video editing peripherals, so don't expect the same times, but the difference will likely be mirrored or worse on an average computer. ProRes takes about 1 minute 15 seconds to convert the footage, whereas H.264 takes about 3 minutes 57 seconds, so just over 3 times as long. Even though this is encoding, not reading the footage, you can see a bit of an example of why H.264 is pretty demanding comparatively. Which is why it's better suited as a delivery or uploading format than an editing format. The resulting files for the H.264 are 327 megabytes, whereas the resulting files for the ProRes are 2.31 gigabytes, which is roughly seven times as large. So again, if you have clips that you don't think you're going to use, that were bad takes, uh, false runs, things like this, it can save you a big amount of hard drive space if you kind of prune those out beforehand. And with that, you're good to go. You've got your files in ProRes, which will be much easier for your computer to edit, especially if it's not designed for video editing or doesn't necessarily have the full specs for it, and you can get started with your video essay or documentary. As one last tip, if you're coming to this tutorial in the middle of a project when you've been having problems playing back your footage and editing them in Premiere, then here are the steps to relink your newly converted ProRes files once they're finished rendering. Note that you may lose any text that you added to the file name field in Premiere, so you may want to copy paste that into another field to keep from losing it. Select all the files you want to replace and then right click them and select Make Offline. This will make Premiere lose track of these files. In the pop-up, make sure it says Media Files Remain on Disk, that way it won't delete your original files, and hit OK. They'll now have a question mark icon instead of a film strip icon. Reselect the files in Premiere, right click them and select Link Media. This will take you to the link screen with a list of all the files that you just offlined. On the bottom left, uncheck File Extension and select Locate in the bottom right. This will open a Finder or Explorer window with the name of the file it wants you to relink. Select the converted version of that clip that you just made and click OK. If you're relinking multiple files that are all in the same folder or directory, it should auto-detect and relink the rest of them for you. And there you go. You now have integrated your new ProRes files into your existing Premiere profile. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, maybe do the YouTube thing and subscribe or like the video, and keep an eye out for more of these tutorials on the channel, which will usually be a bit shorter than this one. Thanks for listening, and good luck with all your editing projects.